is rich. It's full of power, young people. It can transform your life. It can give you satisfaction that you long for. And that's what we want to tell the people of Cagayandioro City. You've seen uh, uh, the young man preaching on the bus. That's His name is Joshua Del Rosario. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. How about that? And immediately I'm thinking of Joshua back here in Bayonne as I'm training him. He was an atheist. He doesn't believe in God. He came through our youth group, our high school club. And he started to understand about Christ. Now, he didn't get saved in our club, but he got saved outside the club. That's all right, amen. And then I caught him and I grabbed him. And I said, Josh, why don't you come to church? Would you like to learn about the Bible more? He says, yes, Pastor Charles. I said, don't call me pastor. He goes, okay, pastor. <laughs> Unbelievable. I said, just call me Kuya. Amen. I don't want to be called pastor. I just want to be called Kuya. I want to help you understand the Word of God. And today he's preaching on the buses. He's preaching in the street. He goes to a Bible school for three years. And he's fervent for Jesus Christ. And I'm praying that he would come on the team again to serve in the garbage area, the landfill area with us. He's reaching out to his own people in his own high school where he got saved. That's exciting. That's transformation. Why? Because he didn't just pray a prayer. He understood. He heard the Word of God. Amen. And the Word of God came into him and transformed his life. You know Hebrews 4.12, don't you? For the Word of God is what? Quick! And powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of joints and marrow, and as a discerner and judge of the heart. Paraphrase. It goes into the heart. It goes in and penetrates us. It changes. It transforms. And the world is looking for transformation. The world is looking for love in all the wrong places. They can't find it. If our Democrats can come and believe in the Word of God, this country would be a lot better. Amen. <laughs> Just a bunch of fools. If our country can understand and rightly divide, if our country can go back, hey, listen, the, the Bible says, Blessed is the nation whose God is their what? Lord. And America has idolatry flooded in our homes, flooded in the streets, flooded in the church. Don't you think for a second that we're not exempt from idolatry even inside the church? That's why Jesus Christ gives an understanding that we should have an, an, a certain attitude of the Word of God. We should have different attitudes. And there are four different attitudes in this Scripture. There are four different kinds of hearers in this parable of the sower. Let's look. There's going to be six results today from hearing the Word of God. And I pray, if you're here today hearing, you know, my father used to say, son, it goes in in one ear and out the other. Why? Because matigas ng ulo. Right? Dahil ng ulo. Right? No, we're so hard-headed. We're so hard-hearted. We're callous to certain things of God. I'm sometimes, I even myself, are callous to the things of God. Listen, you know what I tell people? Just because I'm a missionary 8,000 miles away, and I'm some kind of person that's in Mindanao and doing all the work, I'm just a sinner trying to tell other sinners how to get some bread. That's it. A beggar. Oh, wretched man that I am. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall be able to deliver me from the body of this death? Are you all going to die? Sure. What happened? Six feet under. Everybody comes to your funeral, cries, does this thing, says memorials, the whole the eulogies. Just like we had Saturday. You know, but the greatest thing about Sister Bill Tren is that she's in heaven. Amen? Amen. That was an encouraging funeral service to see and to understand about and to look at her life and to dust that thou shalt return. And the time is now that people can hear. The time is now that people can understand the Word of God. 
Look what it says. The same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto Him so that He went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood. Usually, what would be happening the other way around is that Jesus Christ should be standing and the people should be sitting. You know, my Lord humbled Himself and became obedient even to the death of His cross in Philippians. Then He spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Now, this morning I want you to depict a few things. I want you to see the sower, the seed, and the soil. Now, the sower would be the Lord Jesus Christ. You can even uh, depict it as yourself. The seed would be the Word of God. <clears throat> Can somebody get me some warm water? Just a warm thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. The soil would be man's heart. Let's look at a few things here. He said, And when he sowed, some seeds fell by. Watch what the Bible says. Fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. I want you to be that sower today. But I also want you to be the hearer. There's the challenge. You'd be the sower, those of you who are saved, and you'd also understand, thank you, brother, and you'd also understand to be the hearer of God's Word. And he says this, that that seed, some seeds, it's in the italics, <laughs> fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Now, I want you to go to verse 19, and I want you to see, we're going to go through this chapter, Okay? Don't worry, the food will still be downstairs when we're there. All right, amen? <laughs> Let's have some spiritual feeding. I get the only chance to do this four to six years, okay? Listen up. Listen up is the title. Listen up. <clears throat> when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, this is the prerequisite, the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the law. The wayside. So number one type of hearer is called the waysided hearer. What happens when you think about a wayside? You think, you think about shallow, nothing there. It's, it's concrete. It's something that is not of importance. And when you look at this issue of salvation, you see that there is... The seed had fell by. You know, the Bible says, study to show thyself approved. Rightly dividing. And we should be doing, we should be understanding. And that's how we understand is to rightly divide it. God is a God of division. He did it in the Old Testament. He did it in the New. He did it in the book of Acts with many different languages for distinction. So the seed fell by, and when I think of this, I look at Luke chapter 8. Go to Luke chapter 8, verse 11, if you would. And I want you to see the power of God's Word. I want you to see this seed. What is this seed going to do for us? This Word. And a sower went, uh, went out to sow a seed, and he sowed, and some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Now, the fowl in verse 3, is depicted as Satan, the wicked one, the foul. When you think about of a, uh, a, a, a black hawk or a, a crow, okay, or a vulture or a raven used in 1 Kings, how God used the foolish things of the world to confound the wise with His prophet. What do you think about? What do they feed upon? 